body <laughs> to making sense of people. <laughs> Might be making sense to some people, but it was not probably the best um, Bislama language that you've ever heard in your life because it was somebody speaking it with an Australian accent and with a few other words that are not from Bislama thrown in. So I thought I'd give you the live version now. When I first came back from Papua New Guinea, I wasn't used to having 240 volt power on tap at any time. I was used to battery powered lights that used to run down if I had them on for too long or if I had a couple of lights on at once, everything would go dark. So when I returned to Australia, as the afternoon get, got darker, I'd be sitting in my office in the half dark trying to see what I was doing. Someone would walk past and say, why don't you turn on the light? And they'd flick the switch. Suddenly, the room was filled with light. Power was available, but I wasn't using it. And sometimes that's how we live our lives. We even pray like that sometimes. Power is available, but we're not using it. And the prayer of Paul's in Colossians 1, 9 to 14, shows us how to pray with power. It looks like a long prayer, but actually it has one basic, simple request. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. And that request is found in verse 9. It says, asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. And the rest of this passage tells us all about the purpose of this request and then what the results of it are going to be. So what we're asking God for here, what are we asking God for here? The Greek word that means fill means filled to overflowing. And so Paul is saying that the Christians should pray to be filled to overflowing with the knowledge of God's will. So what does that mean? When you're filled with fear, your fear is the dominating and controlling influence in your life. When you're filled with anger, anger takes you over and rules all your actions. When you're filled to overflowing with something, that is the dominating influence in your life. If you are filled with the knowledge of his will, you will want whatever God wants for your life. When Paul is praying this prayer, He's praying that the Christians will be saying to God, your will be done. And that means, Lord, let your will be done, whatever it costs, whatever it takes, wherever it leads. Let your will be done, even if mine isn't done. Let your plans go forward, even if it means changing my plans. And sometimes as Christians, we ask God to tell us his will. But really what we're saying is, Lord, show me your will so I can consider it to see if it fits in with my plans. But this prayer is huge. Asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. There is no room here for two wills. Ray Pritchard in his book, which I have since lost, but was very good, Beyond, it's called Beyond All You Ask or Think. So if you can find it, read it because it's very good. But he says that praying this prayer leads to some very practical questions. And these questions were so good and to me so challenging that I actually wrote them down. And now I'm going to read them to you. The questions are these. Firstly, do I want to know God's will so I can consider it? Or do I want to know God's will so I can do it? Secondly, am I willing to be engulfed with God's will or do I simply want help in making a hard decision? Third question, am I ready to love what he loves, to go where he sends me, to obey what he tells me to do, to suffer when that is required, to wait when that is required, to endure when that is required? and to rejoice when that is required. Fourth, have I agreed with God in advance that I will do his will even before he tells me what it is? That's a big one, isn't it? Five, 
Will I take the daily small steps that are before me while I'm waiting for the big steps to be revealed? That one is a hard one when you're young and you want everything to happen now. And even when you're old and you still want everything to happen now. It's quite a hard one to do. Six, do I understand that the will of God is more about who I am on the inside than where I am on the outside? And seven, am I ready for my life to change if that's what needs to happen? Big questions. When we get up each morning and we pray, your will be done, our lives will change. We will have peace as we trust God with every happening in our lives. We will rest as we trust our Lord to bring the right outcomes in our lives and in those of our loved ones. In Isaiah 26 and verse 3 it says, You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. Our lives also will become exciting as we wait for God to act. Your will be done is not a namby-pamby, I can't be bothered kind of prayer. It's a prayer that will change our lives. Someone has said it's the prayer that never fails. When we ask God for his will to be done, that prayer will not fail. I'm praying that prayer for my own life, but I also pray it for you, the people in this church, young, old, in between. Why? Some of you might rather I just mind my own business, but I'm praying that prayer because I want for you the fulfilment of God's purposes for you. And the mighty results that Paul says in this passage will happen because of this prayer. So the, we go on to the purpose of this prayer, which is in verse 10. In verse 10 it says, We pray this, that you may live a, a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. Well, some of you might be thinking, well, isn't that the opposite of grace? Isn't the only way to please God by coming to him through Jesus Christ? Well, all of us who have accepted Christ as our saviour are accepted by God and adopted into his family. In one sense, God is already pleased with us because we are in Christ, united to his son. That's like a parent is pleased, even delighted with their baby, simply because it belongs to them. You love your child simply because it's your child, not because of anything that it's done. But there's another sort of parental pleasure that comes when a child brings honour to his family, his or her family. Our purpose in life is to live so that God is pleased with us because our lives bring honour to him. In each of us, there's a sense that we want our lives to be worth something, to make a difference for good in this world. When we live our lives in a way that pleases God, as we do his will, we have a sense of of self-worth, the knowledge that we are fulfilling the purpose for which we were created. So what are the results? They're also in this passage. There are four results that come when we're filled with the knowledge of God and we're walking in his ways to please him. Verse 10b says, we will be bearing fruit in every good work. One of my favourite pictures in the Bible is this picture of God growing his fruit in us day by day as we walk with him. It doesn't picture for us a life of striving in our own strength to be good or to produce our own good character. That's not our work. It's a picture of God pouring himself into us and as we make ourselves available for what he wants and as we're willing to do his will, he changes us. I love the picture of us Christians joined to the vine, hanging on to him, and Jesus pouring into us the nutrients we need to bear good fruit. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, Jesus is talking, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. 
That's in the message translation. I see the beautiful fruit that God is producing in and through different members of this congregation all the time. And you see it too. And God stands by ready to produce that fruit in you too as you allow his will to be done in your life. God has given us all different tasks. Some of us are teachers, some students, some salesmen, some full-time mums, some administrative people, some labourers, some retired. But in whatever task we have, whatever stage of life we're in, our purpose is to bear good fruit in all our good works that we do every day. As we go about our everyday tasks and we're filled to overflowing with the knowledge of God's will, he'll produce the kind of good fruit that he wants in each one of us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. We'll glorify him by our lives. The second result is a life that grows in knowledge of God. As you are filled with the knowledge of the will of God and as you act upon your knowledge of his will, so you also grow in your knowledge of God himself. Do you ever feel as though you don't really know God very well? Well, maybe you should consider whether perhaps it's because instead of doing his will, you're concentrating on doing your own will. God often reveals his will to us in small steps. We grow in our knowledge of God as we take those small steps. Don't wait for something big to come along. Serve God with all the small stuff. Knowing God is not the same as knowing about God. I know quite a lot of facts, or not that many, but a few facts about Anthony Albanese. But I don't know him. And I can know thousands of facts about God, but still not know God. I can know the Bible from cover to cover, but if I'm not living it, it's of no use to me. Unless we truly believe, and that means act upon the things that we read, they're of no value. What are you doing with what you know? You will truly know God when you do what he tells you to do. Question for everyone. Do you know God better today than you did in January 2022? If not, ask yourself, have you been truly seeking him and truly obeying him, truly making him the Lord of your life? Do you truly believe that he's going to work out all things in your life for good if you are following him? The third result is a life that endures in hard times. All of us go through hard times. When we're filled with the knowledge of God's will, then we find ourselves better able to cope. We understand that this life is not all there is, that we're living for eternity. We're supported by the prayers of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Colossians 1.11 says, We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul, not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength that God gives. It's strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy. As most of you know, we recently sent a team of people to Vanuatu, and I was part of that team because I felt that God was telling me I could go. On the first Sunday we were there, we went to a small village and I was privileged to preach there. People told me it was powerful. Yes, I thought. I can see why God brought me here. <laughs> Two days later, I slipped on the road, fell over, cut my leg, and that was basically the end of my usefulness on the trip. There I was, sitting on a chair, with my leg elevated, while the rest of the team waited on me. No trip to Umbai. Feeling useless, feeling pain, wondering what I was here for. So doing God's will doesn't always give us warm fuzzies. Sometimes, as the song says, there's pain in the offering. We won't always understand. We won't always be praised for what we're doing. But if we turn our pain and disappointment over to God, he will use it to produce his beautiful fruits of the Spirit in us. We don't have to go to remote and difficult places to experience God 
walking with us through the hard times. Over the years, many people I've visited in hospital have said to me, I know people are praying. I know God is with me. I can feel it. They sense the peace that comes from God's presence and God's power, even in the hard times. And of course, all these things lead to the fourth result of overflowing with the knowledge of God's will. And that is a life that gives thanks continually. The more we see God at work in our lives, the more our lives are filled with thanksgiving. Our first point for thanksgiving is the fact that God has taken us from darkness to light. He's made a way for us to be permanently in relationship with him. We haven't had to earn our way. He's given it to us as a gift through Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross and rose again. We can be, we are so thankful to God for that. And we are thankful every day as we live our lives in relationship with him. As we rise to the challenges of life, we do it with his wisdom, his strength, his peace, his joy in our lives. And the closer we get to him, the more of these things we experience. The more we're able to say, not my will, but yours be done. The more we're able to give thanks for our lives, the more we realise that our lives have a great cosmic purpose. The more we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Satan wants to make us miserable. He's telling us all the time that what failures we are, that we'll never succeed. We can't do anything right. We're not worth loving. He tells us all those things. But he's wrong. Because God tells us that we are his children, that he loves us, that if we trust in him, we'll be able to handle everything that comes our way. And that makes me thankful. Does it make you thankful? And that's why this prayer is powerful. May you be filled to overflowing with the knowledge of God's will. Because it's a prayer that leads to a life of good works, a knowledge of God that is always growing, the ability to endure hard times and thankfulness for everything that God has done. Not my agenda, his agenda. Not my desires, his desires. Does it sound hard? Well, maybe. But it does lead to a life of purpose and a life that overflows with many good things. Not necessarily an easy life, but a life that goes somewhere that has meaning. When I lived in a place where there were no cars, I walked for hours to get to where I wanted to go. Now I'm living in Australia, I try to motivate myself to walk around the block because I know it's, a good, it's good for me and it's supremely dull because my walking isn't taking me anywhere. In some ways, life without the knowledge of God's will is just like that. We're going round and round in circles without getting anywhere for no reason. But life with God is like the walk through the jungle. Not easy, but purposeful, even joyful, as we head for a certain destination. Life in God's will is not boring. It's the life that fulfills the destiny we were made for. It's filled with the interest and challenge and joy of knowing God. It's a life of freedom from the tyranny of my own desires. Pray this prayer for yourself. Every day, maybe. It takes courage. It takes faith. It seems like a risk. Just say to God every day, your will be done. It's a powerful prayer and it can change your life. So let's sing together, blessed be your name.